Um, the next story is really exciting to me. It's really exciting to me. Uh, it's about a project called Express LRS Radar. And if I told you that Express LRS Radar lets you detect the position of other aircraft in the air and broadcast your position, that sounds an awful lot like... Remote ID, is that what you're going to say? That's where yeah, I'm going. Okay. Thank you. So set it up. You, you're serving okay. it to you. Yeah, <laughs> right. it sounds a lot like remote ID, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so uh, basically, this PR um, is made by Captain Bry, um, Express mm -hmm. LRS Radar. I mean, he's been working on this for a while now. But basically, the idea behind this is that um, they are essentially attempting to be compliant to 3411 and 3582, which are the ASTM guidelines for remote ID. And this will give the option of flashing hardware and or manufacturers making hardware with this remote ID link built in. Um, and if they can work it out properly, we're still working out the finer details. I've been talking to Captain Bry a little bit about trying to make sure they can get this working properly because open source and remote ID tamper evidence kind of goes against each other. So you have to do it in certain ways. But essentially, if this works out, um, the manufacturers would be able to get a declaration of compliance based on this f hardware and firmware um, and would be able to produce cheaper remote ID modules um, that people could purchase. Yeah. I mean, is the thinking, Blunty, that your Express LRS receiver would be your remote ID module? Yes. Or is at the same time that it's also being your Express LRS receiver? Yeah, that's that's what they're that's at least what they've been discussing. Yeah, is uh, at the same time, and they're talking about yeah. And so he's been going through, like, really, it only has to the rate is like one time a second, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's not a lot of extra load as far as the rate goes. So interesting. Like you, you know, it's not like filling the packets. You know, like right. Not, it's not going to interfere know. with your control link in any meaningful way. Yes, it's just about I think the load on the ESP, but I believe that um, it can run alongside ELRS. So. That's that's exciting for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons it's exciting is that, okay, so first of all, step back. For all of the people who say, I'll never comply with remote ID. The FAA can kiss my ass. Well, we'll be done with this story in a few minutes and we'll move on to the next one. Although I have to say, this is about more than remote ID because like, for example, if you have iNav, it has the ability to display on your OSD, the position of the other aircraft that it's detecting. Well, and there's so a little, a, there's, right, oh, we'll, we'll get there. I'm not trying okay. to go there yet, but I just want to point okay. out there are potential uses for this that are beyond remote ID. I just but mean there are two different PRs and code bases, right? So yes. Like, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. But for people who do want or feel like they need to comply with remote ID, then this is an option that has no additional cost and no additional weight, no additional hardware. Every single Express LRS receiver you have can also make you theoretically compliant with remote ID and you can just get on with your life. And that's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, yeah, so just to be clear, you will have to purchase a device with this already on it. Like you wouldn't be able to flash a current device to make it compatible. Uh, the device would have... Because it's not MOC. The What's device you bought is not MOC. Is a means of compliance with the FAA. You have to purchase hardware that's already complied. You can't have hardware that's updated because it's not going to meet the requirements of the guide of the. Okay, the so you would need to. So, uh, so, so here's where it gets a little more complicated because the Express LRS fans are going to be like, "Cool, I just flashed this hardware or this firmware, and now I have remote ID. I am wonderful." But what yeah. actually has to happen is a manufacturer has to build this hardware, like Radio Master, for example. They have yes. to submit it to the FAA for a declaration of compliance, a DOC, right? Yes. And where does the MOC come in? Well, they submit a DOC to uh -huh. get an MOC. Oh, they so submit they, the DOC, they get the MOC. The, like the, 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 the declaration of compliance is that document, and the means of compliance is the document's contents. Okay. So it's sort of interchangeable-ish. But yeah, essentially they acquire... Uh, a, a filed means of compliance that's on the FA's list. Yeah. So you would buy an Express LRS receiver from perhaps uh, Radio Master, which has this functionality built in. And th theoretically, there would be some additional cost there because, like, are, what, aren't there? Radio Master has requirements put on them by the FAA, don't they? 
if there's anyone I mean, who's selling a remote ID device has certain yeah, requirements. Basically, yeah, basically they would need to be um, have remote support. We need to log all the people who purchase them in a database. Um, they need to be available for the FAA for issues, and they also have to be able to contact all users with contact information to be able to update in case of a critical mm -hmm. issue. Now, here's the real thing, though. Let's say I flash this uh, code to my Express Alerts receiver, and it begins broadcasting, and in every way it appears to be a completely valid remote ID transponder, except that it doesn't have an MOC. At which point, on some level, might I be skating under the radar? Well, because who's going to know? The question is, um, there's two scenarios here. One is that you're asking about a Karen, and the answer is nobody's going to know. Right. The other is that you're asking about a police officer or FAA representative or someone, and they will know as soon as they try to look up your serial number. Right. Okay. So you're broadcasting my FAA ID is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a police officer or FAA inspector who has taken notice of you for some reason tries to look that up and they look it up and there's no serial number in there. So this is where it well, comes down. To, yeah. Well, they'll try to look up your, yes. I mean, your, uh, they, they'll try both ways. I imagine they'll try to look up the serial number to see if it shows up in the database. They'll find oh, it, it does not. It, it broadcasts its own serial number. Correct. It can broadcast a static serial number that you cannot change as the module. So every time you broadcast, you'll broadcast that serial number that's written into the module. It's open source, though. Can't I just change that? Sure, you could. Yes. I mean, yeah. yeah where does this, the serial number yeah. serial number is like must be tied to like a unique identifier in the MCU or something like that, right? It, it's not just manually assigned at manufacturing time. Yes, it's manually assigned at manufacturing time. Yeah. Like it's on like a, you know, like you can't change it because there's, you're not, you don't right, have access to that layer. It's tied to hardware. I, I was what I'm getting at. It's not like compiled into the code as a define. Because then everyone uh, would need unique code. It has to be derived from a unique hardware identifier, I would think. I'm not sure I understand. You get license, you get a set of serial numbers from the FAA and they, you have to put those on your devices. Oh, I see. You put the serial number in. Got it. Yes. I understand. Yeah, as a manufacturer, I file for my MOC. When I get my MOC back, then that MOC gives me a like a front end, so I get like four letters, and I then see. I get to assign a set of okay. numbers, and I file with the FA to tell them the numbers I assign. Got it. Yeah. So, 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 this would, if you tried to do that, you could look to a casual observer as if you had a remote ID tr tr transmitter, but anyone who dug deeper or had access to an FAA and database would immediately know you were not legit. Yeah, and you could also spoof somebody else's number. But again, you, that would be yeah, as soon as anybody looks into it, what's the benefit? Because as soon as somebody sees that, then they'll know it's not real. What, uh, when you say, what, what if I know somebody's FAA identifier and I know their serial number somehow? So now I just put their information well, you in just there. Saw, I mean, if you saw them flying, you just check the app. Yeah, I mean, you can have it easy peasy. Oh, right. You can't. Oh, my God. I haven't thought of this. So. You cannot keep your identifier and your serial number private because they are required sure. to be broadcast. Well, there's just one thing. It's a serial number. That'll be your identifier. Okay. Yes. So all I have to do is go to a park where some little kid is flying his drone, grab his serial number, and put his serial number in all my drones, and then I can go fly wherever I want, and when the FAA comes looking, he'll get in trouble. That's yes, not, that's correct. That's, has no one actually thought this through? But the, yeah, but the problem is... <laughs> So, so number one, this is why they want things to be tamper evident and all come from manufacturers, right? Because they don't want mm -hmm. you to be broadcasting something fake. They don't want you to be able to change it. Okay. Um, and number two is, what benefit does that provide you? Because in any case, you're either not going to be seen and it won't matter what your number is, or somebody's going to come physically check you and then the number's going to be wrong. So you don't gain a benefit by broadcasting the wrong number, right? Just to be argumentative, I'm going to come up with a scenario where there's a benefit. Okay, great. Yeah, I'd love to know. If someone is, rec you know, what's the what's the acronym for where they're recording all the remote ID information in a location? You you, you said it to me on the on a phone call the other day, but I can't remember it. Sorry, what? Did, I'm sorry. What? The acronym for like where they record all the remote ID info in an area. Oh, uh, I can't remember which 
term they're using now. I interchangeably use like four terms, but I think it's USS, yeah. Yeah, Unmanned Service it. Supplier. Yeah. I think that's right. So they've talked about how in certain areas they could just set up a device to log remote ID information that if I'm in that area yeah. and I'm doing something sketchy, but I have not yet been confronted by the cops or the FAA, I could go there, I could fly around, and then when they look for my information, they would find little little Billy's information instead of mine. But I'm saying Some. if you put a random number in there, they would also find the random number and not you also. So oh, what benefit true. do you gain from little I, Billy's number versus no I, number? I'm trying to get little Billy in trouble with the government. All right. So, yeah. I'm just saying, let's not do two. They always say, you know, no, don't but break like, two crimes I'm not at making, once, right? I'm not making it up. Let's say that there's a particular YouTuber who you hate. And sure. you're at Rotoriot Rampage and he's broadcasting oh, remote ID. So you get his not. serial number. And yeah. now you take his serial number, you use open source hardware and software to put it into a remote ID device or you or fuck you just buy a remote ID device and you put the serial number in it right you don't need to and then you go well, and you fly it over a dam or a nuclear power plant and then yeah, he gets in trouble can, yeah to be clear no purchasable device that I'm aware of you can enter a serial number into that's the whole point of this is like they come with their own serial licensed by the manufacturer and that's the serial you get to use so mm -hmm. we're talking about express LRS open source where we can enter so our own number to be open, okay. but i just want to be clear that yeah okay. in, in all these other cases you should not be able to all change right. that serial i got exciting i got excited i found a loophole it's interesting okay it's interesting that something so critical also is broadcast and is potentially ripe for abuse um, like this ESP32 project where it spams fake remote ID information, so, for example. Yes, right. So that's the other debate. People are asking if this is a violation. Is it a violation to broadcast the wrong thing from the ground on a device? Why would it be? That's not prohibited. At so what, the question where is, is that prohibited? Isn't, isn't there some kind of like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. That's the question. I don't know. But isn't it illegal to impersonate like in some way or another, like, isn't there some kind of way they could get you with that? That's what I'm curious about. Is there, isn't there some like spoofing rule or like some kind of weird? Gen, I don't think there's, I mean, like, I think it feels like, like a real using, stretch. It feels like, like a stretch. Using a radio frequency signal to impersonate a, a something. You know what I mean? It feels like, like a, it feels like a real stretch. That's fair. I don't no, know. Fair. I'm not a but lawyer. But then the question, so if that's, yeah, I mean, if that's not a problem, Yep. then you could easily make this whole thing not make any sense by having remote ID signals come from everywhere all the time, right? Yeah, well, the whole thing doesn't make sense, but well, we let's, know move, that. let's move on because there, the next piece that, that, that I hinted at actually relates yeah. to iNav and is really freaking cool. Yes. So um, in a similar vein, though, this came out of a different project, um, Formation Flight um, is now um, available. And it started as a fork of INAV radar, but it is now its separate project um, called mm -hmm. Formation Flight. And it'll run along Betaflight, INAV, or ArduPilot. Um, and it displays information about UAVs in the area. Um, it broadcasts position, altitude, speed, and aircraft name, and listens for other UAVs. So your flight controller's OSD can display this information. So that's one of the kind of the cool ideas here is that, um, you know, with this tool, you can get other planes into your OSD and information about other planes and stuff into your OSD. I don't know why I can't find this picture on the formation flight wiki, but it looks something like this. Like you can see right here, here is an indicator in the OSD of an aircraft out there somewhere that's broadcasting its location. That's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. It's very cool. And currently, just so we're clear, formation flight does not broadcast remote ID uh, mm -hmm. signal. Mm -hmm. So it is a separate thing, but um, yeah. So, just to be so it's broadcasting similar information like the location of the aircraft, but the remote ID has specific requirements for exactly what it broadcasts. Formation Flight could, through a code update, also do the same thing that Express LRS uh, radar is doing at remote you got ID. It. <clears throat> okay. You got it. Okay. Well, those are very, very exciting. Um, 